Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Stake. Let's get started. So my interesting fact of the day is that James Winston last night had 157 point something um, quarterback rating, which is almost near perfect. I mean, he only had one incompletion. So that was a pretty good performance by James Winston last night. Um, so now that the whole week two of the preseason is now complete, I'm going to go ahead and go over my one phrase and a summary you know, for um, each game. So let's start off with the Patriots versus Eagles. Cam I am. So after the first preseason game, based on the performance, we started thinking, okay, is Cam's starting job actually safe for week one? Now I know it's the Eagles, but I think Cam has kind of solidified himself now to start week one. Um, not necessarily the whole season, and I'm not saying that, but definitely for week one. Um, also, after the way Joe Flacco played against the Patriots, I think it's safe to say that Jalen Hurts will be the starter. Bengals versus Washington. Um, get some Heineke packages. So I know Fitzpatrick will start the season as he should. Um, but watching Heineke the first two games, along with the playoff I mean, the game you know, from last season against the Bucks, I definitely didn't think he should get some packages or snaps. Not a, re a receiver or type in or type in or anything like that. Like a, like a true Taysom Hill type of edge. But you know, qu quarterback wildcat type of situations, you know. I know Fitzpatrick can run, but obviously Heineke is a way better athlete and runner. So I feel like... Or you can even use him in deep ball situations just to kind of keep the defense honest. Something like that. So in that way, I feel like, I mean, you can use all the offensive advantages you can get if you're Ron Rivera in Washington. Um, Chiefs versus Cardinals. Need to shake off the rust. So both teams, but especially Kyler Murray in Arizona, were rusty in this game. Even though Kyler Murray has reported to, um, you know, not like the preseason, that's the one thing that makes preseason a little important is you need to shake off that rust. Um, Bills versus Bears. Help wanted. Good old line wanted. Man, the old line for the Bears, no matter who starts to keep you, you know it's going to be Andy Dalton at least for week one. And it's going to be an issue this year. For people who are surprised, um, I have the Bears, you know, under 500 this year and missing the playoffs. And their bad old line is going to be the reason why. Um, not necessarily Andy Dalton, but the bad old line. The defense can only do so much for them. Jets versus Packers. Aaron Rodgers 2.0. Now, I'm not actually saying Wilson's going to be Rodgers 2.0, but he played like Rodgers on Saturday. He was very good for the first time. He's 9 11, 120 yards, two touchdowns, 154 pass rating. Now, of course, both the Giants in the first game and then the Packers this game are playing mostly backups on defense. He's not getting the true starters. But at least this is a good start for him after, you know, reports coming out of having a bad camp. Um, also, um, a the Jets look like they're going to be one of those teams that's just probably going to get hit the injury bug a lot this year based off what we've seen so far already, so it kind of sucks for them. Um, Falcons versus Dolphins. Good start, still doubtful. So far, you know, except for the one interception red zone, the Bears game two has looked very good this preseason so far. And if you're a Miami fan, that's good to see. But I just want to continue to wait, though, because the start of the season you got at New England versus Buffalo, at Las Vegas, which that's an easier defense, but then versus Indy and then at Tampa Bay for their first five games. So let's. So those are going to be very tough defenses. So we'll kind of see what two is made of after those first five games, because if he's one and four or two and three in that start, then, you know, there's your answer. Um, Ravens versus Panthers. The streak is still alive. So the Ravens have now won 16 straight preseason games, and this was one with – they won this one with ease in the second half. Um, got to see Sam Darnold for a drive. I wish it was a little bit more, but oh well. Um, Lions versus Steelers, prime Big Ben. So for a few series, you saw a good Big Ben with this new offense coordinator. Now remember, he played really well to begin the season last season, and then it kind of dipped off. Kind of like what we see Drew Brees, you know, he's plays he's pretty good, but now as you get to the playoffs, you can tell he's not been not the same. So it's going to be like that. So a lot of people are excited. Oh, look at it, Big Ben's back, or oh, the new offense corner, offense corner is going to help him. But it's like let's just wait, because with his old age and everything, he's probably going to deteriorate towards the end of the season. Texans versus Cowboys, still undecided. So after the game, head coach Mike McCarthy is still undecided on the backup QB job. Um, my opinion, I think they should trade for Rick Foles, Ryan Minshew, or something like that. But if, if they don't do that, then since they started um, Gavert um, over Rush every preseason game so far, I just feel like they should just go with him if Dak has to miss some time. And then for some reason, if Gavert... Um, you know, doesn't perform on practice that week for some reason and Cooper Rush does better, then you can, you know, change that plan accordingly. At least Ben DiNucci took himself out of the running with his three picks um, in the last game. So since no team usually keeps four quarterbacks on the roster, you usually get cut. Colts versus Vikings. Number two. 
So Sam Ellinger and his, and his star in battle for that backup job with Jakey Beeson showed some flashes, but the two intercept but had two interceptions sadly. While Beeson once again performed very well like he did last week. So again, kind of like you know, like you can use Ellinger in like you know quarter wild kind of quarterback type of situation. Um, but I think Eason has definitely won this number two job, if you will. And if Wins has to wisp, miss any time, then um, be a week one starter. Broncos versus Seahawks. Still even Steven. That's the co-head coach Vic Mangio said about the quarterback competition um, last week. And then towards the very end of the week, he was like, okay, now I start having an idea in my mind. But now after this game, he may be thinking, oh, great, now I'm back to square one. Um, so Bridgewater, um, if – if he was thinking about starting Bridgewater, then you know his feelings have been confirmed after the second preseason game. If he was thinking Locke, then now he has to kind of reconsider things. So Teddy Bridgewater went 9-11, 105 yards, touchdown, and Locke went for 9-14, 80 yards. Um, what's interesting is that their schedule is interesting because before they play hard opponents, they play at Giants versus Jags and versus Jets for the first three games. So if I were Fangio, I would go to the safe route and just start Teddy Bridgewater against the easy opponents – and that way you can also kind of humble Drew Locke at the same time while you're at it. And then once, or if Bridgewater starts to lose, then you can insert um, Drew Locke. And because, you know, he's out on the bench being humbled, that can hopefully give him the comp- like the confidence and um, boost that he needs to kind of, you know, take care of the ball and be a good quarterback because he definitely has the better skill set. So also the Broncos' defense this year should be really good. So whoever's quarterback, they should be um, definitely in games this year, unlike last year. Raiders versus Rams. Perkins is working. So I know the Rams have um, Wolford, you know, who even started the playoff game last year with Jared Goff's injured, and then they got Doug Hodges, you know, remember him from Pittsburgh, um, in the quarterback group already. But if I'm Sean McVay here, the offense of my genius he is, like I said with, like, you know, Hanky stuff, I would keep Perkins and have him get in some wildcat packages. And I feel like he's a good enough athlete to even try, you know, some you know slot receiver, Taysom Hill type of stuff. Like, he's that good of an athlete. Um, like, because when he runs the ball, it kind of reminds me of a poor man's, you know, Lamar. So, with Stafford not being mobile, and then you lose your top two running backs, you know, because Akers sees an injury, um, Howard left for Miami, but then also Don Harrison actually just got injured as well. Don't know how long he's going to be out for. So, you need all the run help you can get. So, that's what I would do if I'm Sean McVay there. Titans versus Bucks. Don't ask for Trask. A lot of people, when the Bucks drafted Kyle Trask at the end of the second round on this past season, thought he should be you know, the automatic backup and the heir apparent to Tom Brady. Well, after his two picks against the third and fourth stringers, let's just, against, uh, you know, the Titans, let's just wait off on that. Um, Gabbers is going to back up, and hopefully the Bucks don't have injuries because, once again, their backups have been playing bad this preseason. Giants versus Browns, just keep running. You know that um, phrase, you know, on finding door, they just keep swimming, so they just keep running here. So even with the backup running backs and the backup bull line, the Browns still can run the ball so well. They had 163 rushing yards. Uh, so the season, I know you know Baker has weapons and all that. Odell Beckham Jr. came back, but with the top five offensive line and Chubb and uh, Kareem Hunt, it's just like if I'm the Browns, just run the ball as much as you can. If you do, you'll be just fine. 49ers versus Chargers. Progression. So Lance still wasn't great. I mean, he had an interception, but he did at least have two touchdowns, you know. But at least what I saw in this game is that he showed a little more progression and he showed a little more, you know, oomph that he did in the first game. Um, now, both, by the way, the interception for both trans and GBG were about 100% their fault, you know, tip off the wide receiver's hands both times. But um, I, that's something that to keep in mind about when you're looking at the quarterback battle there. But also, I know Chase Daniels is a proven backup veteran and he's with the Chargers right now. But after watching Easton Stick play the 49ers on Sunday, I feel like he should be Justin Herbert's backup. And then last but not least, you get the Jaguars versus Saints. Winston wasn't missing. So Winston goes 9-10, 123 yards, two touchdowns, and just three drives. Um, he hit, the, you know, two 40-plus bombs, you know, for touchdowns. Um, both, by the way, both of them, you know, they were, like, good throws. But I would say, you know, it's more of the better catch by the receiver than a good throw. But um, anyway, it's still, you know, good execution there. And then Taysom Hill start, started off very slow, but then he finally started gaining some steam. He went um, 11-20, 130 yards, and then a touchdown, which was good for him. Um, so the battle has remained close coming into the game, and I think this may have been the block at blow that Jameis needed finally to put himself over the hub. Now again, like I explained last week, 
You have to take preseason, you have to take things into context. For example, Hill was facing the Ravens starters on defense. Ravens starters, Jaguar stars. Yeah, you can see why James Winston came out of the gate pretty hot. I mean, Ravens defense is going to be way higher than Jaguars defense. And now you may say, well, Hill's playing the Jaguars backup, so he should be good. It's like, well, in an essence, yeah. But, but something you have to keep in mind is that I feel like there's no difference between the Packers second string, third stringers for the most part, and the Jaguars third string, second, third stringers for the most part. I feel like all backups are kind of pretty much on the same playing level um, for the most part. So that's why I'm, I'm not thinking, you know, that per se. But, um, yeah, I you know, you know me, I've been on the Taysom Hill train. I've been kind of like the, I forgot his name, I think it was Ben from the Boston Globe. He's a reporter for them. He was saying from league sources that, the preseason won't matter much that Taysom Hill is going to start because Sean Payton really wants to try that experiment. And then if it fails, then he can rely on James Winston and Taysom Hill can go back to Swiss Army knife roll. Um, so I, and I've been agreeing with that, thinking he should definitely get his chance and all that. Um, but, you know, after watching last night, you know, I'm, I, I gotta be some, I gotta be someone biased, you know, unbiased, you know, and I gotta, you know, give James his props where it's due there. So now if James wins this job, we'll know why. But if Taysom Hill wins this job, then we know that report for the Boston Globe is true. And then also, there was a another report um, from a Saints reporter. Um, his name is Michael Balco. Um, actually, right before the first preseason game against the Ravens, he came out and said that the sources he got was these preseason games are going to matter. They're going to start Taysom Hill week one. And then after last night's game, he actually sent out a tweet saying, and if I'm wrong about my Taysom Hill news, then I vow to never break a Saints story again. So basically, you know, he's putting a lot of stake on this report, which means he feels very confident that he's right about that first report back from a week ago. And if that's the case, then this makes it for a very interesting debate and topic. Um, so we'll, we'll see um, if they do name a starter before the last preseason game against Arizona, wait till after that. Um, it'll be kind of interesting to see what happens here. Uh, again, I'm st- uh, since I'm on the Hill band, I'm still going to hope for him and all that. And I still feel like he does deserve to get a shot to be the starter. But I, now, I'm after someone last night, now I'm not going to be surprised if Winston wins it. Um, so we'll kind of see what happens there. And then also, if I'm a reminder, just name Trevor Lawrence the starter, please. I mean, in that game, it was clear who's the better player. Just name Trevor Lawrence the starter at this point. So that's it for my podcast today. Please subscribe to my channel, tell everyone about me. Um, Thank you very much, and you all have a wonderful day.